is the Bob Grant Show on WOR. Be heard. Hello again, everyone. The telephone lines are open. The number to call 1-800-321-8828. In a program dedicated to free and open exchange of ideas and of opinions. And this is Bob Grant, back from uh, China after two exciting, educational, informative, inspiring weeks. And I do want to share some of my observations with you. Not to do a travelogue, because uh, those of you who have uh, listened to the Bob Grant Show over these years know that uh, I don't do travelogues. Uh, when I go somewhere, I don't uh, come back and tell you uh, uh, where the best places are to eat and uh, the finest hotels. I'm more interested in uh, the uh, place that I have visited, the people who are there. Let me tell you, first of all, about the people. Make no mistake about it. The Chinese are a wonderful people. They are hardworking, they are industrious, they are incredibly stoic. And uh, they're either great actors or they are genuinely, uh, or at least seem to be, happier than we do. Now, does this mean I'm saying let's adopt uh, the uh, Chinese form of government? Of course not. As a matter of fact, in some of the uh, places we went to along the Yangtze River, I saw squalor the likes of which I've never seen before. I saw poverty, the likes of which I've never seen before. And yet, the people don't seem to complain. Now, some people could be cynical and say, well, they don't dare complain. And uh, maybe, uh, maybe that's true. Uh, will China ever become uh, the uh, democratic nation that uh, the United States is? I doubt it. But uh, we uh, should uh, have learned by this time that uh, we can't impose our values on others. Uh, to do so only incurs their resentment, and it only backfires. Do they admire America? Yes. Do they admire Americans? Some of them. Um, the uh, people I had the opportunity to talk to told me that uh, they like the energy that Americans they've met seem to possess, uh, but uh, they, they wonder about uh, America's will to continue. Uh, for example, here's something I learned. They now have a rule in the uh, schools in China that after the sixth grade, a Chinese student has to take English classes, learn some English. Now, isn't that interesting? Here we're downgrading the English language in the United States, saying, hey... Uh, si habla espanol, or uh, whatever else, but uh, no, forget about English. But uh, in China, that is becoming their second language. Think about that. Is there, um, is there a, a lot, are there a lot of problems in China? Absolutely. Um, as a matter of fact, there are some problems there that are probably insurmountable because of the huge, Population. Can you imagine a nation not too much bigger than the United States in total acreage with 1,220,000,000 people? 1,220,000,000 people. And uh, yes, they do have a one child per family rule. If you do have a second child, well, that second child is not officially recognized. Uh, if you want to send that second child to school, well, you do so at your own expense. You do everything at your own expense. Otherwise, uh, the first child uh, is guaranteed an education. Up until recently, the education was guaranteed even beyond high school. But now, they're adopting uh, a program in which the uh, people who can afford it are expected to pay for the youngsters' college education. As a matter of fact, uh, I was reading prior to just uh, coming back that the seventh plenum of the 14th uh, uh, Central Committee uh, meeting concluded uh, with the issuance of a communique. And that communique uses uh, certain words like market socialism, but what they mean is capitalism. And indeed, signs of capitalism, particularly in cities like Shanghai, are quite apparent. But what impressed me most? The children. 
the children. Um, I, I, I wish you could have all been in some of these classrooms with me to see these children, these little children, and how they, uh, how they conduct themselves. At any rate, I know there are other things on your mind other than what I had discovered in China. And I invite you, uh, no matter what your topic is, hey, doesn't that sound, doesn't that sound staid? Doesn't that sound old, like old-fashioned radio? Whatever your topic is, <laughs> shame on me. Whatever is on your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Bob Grant, and we'll uh, get to those phone calls and uh, your comments, your questions, your concerns in just a moment. Bob Grant on WOR. All right, and let's be heard indeed. I want to, before I pick up that telephone and take our first call, I want to thank Jay Severin and uh, Jim Kerr for doing such a fine job uh, while I was away. I know the program was in excellent hands, and uh, I'm sure that you enjoyed uh, their being here, and I thank them. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'll say hello to uh, Marlene calling from uh, New Jersey. Yes. yes, Marlene, what's on your mind? Hi, Bob. Yes. I would like to ask you a question and get an answer because we're a little bit puzzled. How come Hillary Clinton, when she goes to college, has to be taken on Air Force One jet to get there? After all, she wants to be like all the other college students. Why does Air Force One have to come out and pay the American taxpayers money? I think you mean uh, Chelsea uh, Clinton, Chelsea, not, not I mean. Hillary. Yes. Uh, why? Well, uh, probably uh, because uh, they, uh, their excuse or their alleged reason is that uh, they have to go all out to uh, make every effort to protect uh, every member of the first family. And um, since Chelsea is the first daughter, uh, they have to do that. Do I approve of that? Do I uh, think it's... Uh... I don't think you would. No, of course not. Right. And everyone I speak to doesn't either. After all, she wants to be like any other student. So then hop her she on doesn't the really. She, does, she doesn't really want to be. That's a lot of garbage when you read that, the paper that she said she wants to be like every other student. Uh, she knows uh, full well she can't be, even if she really wanted to be. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Marley. See the way it goes, ladies and gentlemen? You go across the world, you go to China, uh, an extremely important uh, nation. And uh, does anybody uh, want to know... Uh, um, anything about uh, China? No, they want to know about the first uh, daughter. Anyway, that's, hey, that's people. Uh, Jim from St. Augustine, Florida. What's on your mind, Jim? Hi, Bob. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, um, I want to touch on this Paula Jones being audited by the IRS. Yes. Uh, I mean, now, why is it a shock to anyone when this is the same man who the day after his re-election declared that he was going to get his enemies? And um, this, as we know, this... Um, this administration has had a past of uh, using the IRS against his enemies like Billy Dale, the Mendozas, to name a few. Well, isn't it amazing that uh, even though everybody knows what you know, nobody is really complaining about it? I mean, it just, it just smells to high heaven. It's so obvious what's going on here with Paula Jones well, and I the IRS. Witness intimidation, because if you're a witness who's going to testify against him, I mean, don't, wouldn't you think twice about doing it now? Uh... I mean, what's to say that you wouldn't, you wouldn't be audited if... Uh... Yeah. Well, I think it speaks for itself, uh, Jim. Okay. Thank you very much. Here's Mike from uh, Long Island. Uh, yeah, Mike, what's on your mind, Mike? My exact opinion with the gentleman before me, I, don't, I can't understand how we let this guy get away with all this garbage investigating Paula Jones and all. What, 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 where, where's the American people? I don't understand it. Well, uh, I don't either. I, I don't understand. Uh, in part, the reason the, in part the reason is the media. Uh, if the media went after this slime ball we call a president, uh, the way they went after uh, uh, Richard uh, Nixon, for example, the way they went after uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, the way they went after anybody but Bill Clinton. Uh, and when I say go after, I mean really give it the exposure that uh, it should get. Uh, if they did that, then the American people would follow. But the American people are... Here, here. I, I want you to hear the American people. Here they are. The American people, ladies and gentlemen. The American people. Bah, bah. I mean, they're sheep. They don't think for themselves. You'll listen to this program and you'll hear uh, the very few people who do think for themselves. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mike. Okay, let's say hello to John from Brooklyn. Yes, John. Uh, first of all, welcome back. Thank you, John. And, and in regard to Paula Jones on Tim Russett's show on yesterday, uh, Face the Nation in the News, that they had the McMillans who, who are taking over the defense of uh, Paula Jones. Yes. And uh, uh, I, I, as you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the commentator is a out-and-out uh, Clinton lover, and he, and he was doing everything to disparage these people. Well, and, don't forget and, Tim Russert. When I met Tim years ago, he was uh, Mario Cuomo's PR man. Well, and, and he, here's what went on in the show, roughly, in a, in a nutshell. Uh, they, they, they were talking back and forth about uh, the, the dropping of the pants and identifying the private parts and everything. And he takes the huffing attitude, the President of the United States. He was, uh, and McMillan's wife mentioned that, that that if he could drop his pants as a governor, uh, there's no reason why he shouldn't be examined by uh, doctors and uh, photographs taken to identify. But to get back to the main part, uh, did the zinger come later on when Mrs. McMillan said that at a, at a meeting of uh, more or less pro-Clintonites in Ark Little Rock, Arkansas, and Paula Jones was there, she got a more or less a cool reception and these, these people were saying they, how good guy is. And then one of the women got up and told Mrs. McMillan that when she was in the high school cheerleading team about 20, 15 or 20 years ago, when, when Governor Clinton started in his political career, that, that they were all brought over to the governor's mansion for a little rah-rah meeting and stuff like that, good old public relations. And everything else, one, one of the women says when, when she was a teenage girl going out the door, uh, he, he, he grabbed her by the rear end. The governor, and this come right out of the blue. Maybe she mentioned to her friends, but here it come out on Tim Russell's show on a national network that he was grabbing 16-year-old girls' rear ends when he was the governor of the state of Arkansas. How does that grab you, Bob? All right, thank you very much, John. Ladies and gentlemen, straight ahead. 2-1-8-8-2-8. Let's get back to our busy phones here. And the telephone number, ladies and gentlemen, let me hasten to remind you. 1-800-321-8828. 1-800-321-8828. Here's Carol from Franklin Square on the Bob Grant Show. Yes, Carol. Are you there, Carol? Carol, uh, going, going, gone. All right, I guess Carol never was there. Let's try Lynn from New York City. Are you there, Lynn? I'm here, Bob, and happy to have you back. And we do want to hear uh, about your trip as it, as it occurs to you from time to time. And I hope you had a good time and that you weren't exhausted because it sounds like a really grueling trip in spite of all the wonders. But speaking of, of uh, China, our Manchurian candidate in the Oval Office has pulled another sneaky, fast one. And that, and I don't think it's been, it's been very hushed up, and the Republicans have capitulated because they were afraid that the... Uh, the government would be shut down again. And what it is, in effect, Medicare patients, our senior citizens, will be now, prevent, starting January, will be prevented from going to see their, their family doctors, even if they want to pay him privately. It's the darnest thing, Bob. Now, this means that, that American seniors will have less freedom to contract or, or pay for fee than their counterparts in Britain who live under Social Security. And here we go again. Now, now, the government is threatening fines of $2,000. You remember when Hillary's fine was 10000 and some jail time for the doctor, you know? And, Bob, I want to ask you, what are the Clintons going to trying to do? Why are they going after the doctors? And why are the Clintons uh, offering to pay hospitals money to, not to uh, train specialists? And most of all, and for anybody that has moms or dads or aunts or uncles and to kind of keep an eye on them, why are the Clintons now picking on our senior citizens? Well, I think the answer really is um, this is their response to the fact that the uh, Hillary Clinton uh, uh, socialized medical, uh, medical program, which uh, she attempted to uh, fob off on the American people in 1993, I'm sure you remember, Ira Magaziner and the, the uh, 400 and some odd uh, meetings that they were having, the secret meetings, which... Uh, turned out to be unconstitutional. Do you remember that? Oh, I sure do. Okay, so she uh, is very angry that she didn't get this thing uh, that she uh, wanted. And by the way, who in heaven's name elected her? But uh, at any rate, uh, they couldn't get it uh, the way they wanted to in 1993, so they're trying to get a socialized program, uh, shall we say, through the back door. 
Well, you know, the senator, a man named Kyle of Arizona, and also a GOP rep, uh, Bob, uh, Bob Thomas, or Bill Thomas, I guess it is, and they're trying very hard to get a bill together, uh, now that it's all, it's all said and done, and it hasn't quite gone through yet, to rescind all of this and use the exact words that the, that the British do in terms of, uh, you know, full freedom to pay for private treatment from any uh, doctor that they want to go to. I'm afraid, Senator Kyle, who is absolutely right and who is one of the uh, better senators in the United States Senate, I'm afraid Senator Kyle won't get enough of his own uh, party to vote for his bill. Uh, what has happened here is uh, the, uh, the Democrats are in lockstep. The 45 Democrats are in lockstep, and uh, therefore they never break ranks. The Republicans with 55 members break ranks. You have uh, people like Jim Jeffords of uh, Vermont, for example. You have Olympia Snow of Maine. Uh, you have Gordon Smith of Oregon. You have uh, several Republicans who uh, feel more comfortable voting with the Democrats. So uh, I don't think Senator Kyle's bill will uh, go through, although it should. Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, in his Inside Education uh, column, which uh, I think appeared on August 28th, he uh, calls... Uh, calls it Clinton's phony war on illiteracy. He says in part, and I quote uh, the uh, distinguished uh, Dr. Hurwitz, the war on illiteracy is older than the war on poverty. Age, however, has afforded the reading and writing battle no advantage. A current body count shows 40% of American eight-year-olds cannot read. Among 12th graders, 64% read so poorly that they cannot do the academic work at their grade level. About 45 million Americans are unable to read phone books, car manuals, the Bible, or directions on a medicine bottle. They are functional illiterates. A recent entry into the war on illiteracy is President Clinton. Joined by First Lady Hillary, who endorsed a failed reading program in her book, It Takes a, a Village. Under the president's program, the government would recruit a million volunteers to teach reading. The college students are minimally trained in reading methods and will be taught the very methods that have produced the national reading disaster. Their volunteerism, if it ever gets underway, will exacerbate the reading crisis. That's just part of what he says. So, uh, here this, uh, this man, he's an incredible, he, I tell you, you've got to give, you give the devil his due. This, this guy, who is a fake, phony fraud, uh, is still able to uh, achieve a, uh, an approval rating of uh, 59 to 64 percent, depending on what week it's taken. Some weeks it's 59, other weeks it's 64. And uh, you have to give him credit. He is a magnificent performer. And yet, people like David Broder, uh, in his uh, column a couple of weeks ago, pointed out that uh, this president is so obviously studied, uh, so obviously uh, mechanical, so obviously fake. He points out how on command, on command, Bill Clinton can summon a tear. On command, he will bite his lower lip and look very sad over something. And then... When he thinks the camera is not on him, you see him chuckling. Remember the Ron Brown uh, memorial? Ron Brown. Whatever happened to Ron Brown? 1-800-321-8828. Catherine, uh, you're on the Bob Grant Show. What's on your mind, Catherine? Uh, Bob, first I want to say that I'm absolutely delighted you're back. We need your uh, honesty and your courage and your guts, and there's very little of it in the media these days. <laughs> uh, I wanted also to ask you about China. Where did you go, and uh, what were your impressions, and what was it about the children you were impressed with? All right. Well, first of all, the, what I was impressed with the uh, children was uh, their eagerness uh, to... Uh, uh, to meet uh, uh, these strange adults who came into their classroom. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, believe it or not, uh, we even danced with these uh, little uh, <laughs> cutie pies. Um, but uh, uh, their eagerness, their, 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 uh, it, it, it was infectious how, how uh, ingenuous they were, how eager they were, how uh, happy they were to meet people. Um, 
and how hard they work. I mean, five o'clock, let me tell you, five o'clock, they're coming home from school. They're, they're leaving school at five o'clock. They're there early in the morning till five o'clock. Are they complaining? Absolutely not. Uh, where did we go? Well, we went to Hong Kong, of course, and I observed the difference between Hong Kong now and the Hong Kong I saw in 1992. And what was the difference? None. Uh, except that business is down. Hotel occupancy was uh, 90% in uh, 1992 when I was there. Uh, now it's down to 62%. And uh, if, uh, if the uh, people don't uh, start returning to Hong Kong, uh, a lot of businesses are going to go under. Oh. Um, but uh, the, some of the Chinese I talked to said uh, that uh, they are concerned that uh, Dong Shi uh, Hua uh, will... Uh, clamp the lid uh, on uh, people in Hong Kong. As a matter of fact, look, I've got to be honest with you. Uh, they can't uh, publish newspapers the same way in Hong Kong as they did prior to uh, the handover. Uh, they, uh, they couch their words very carefully. I could read you some editorials uh, in uh, the uh, newspaper, the South uh, China uh, Morning Post, and... Um, they're not quite as candid. They're, they're very careful. Um, and uh, if, if, if by my remarks you think I found China to be an open society, it isn't. But compared to what it was, they have come a long way. Uh, Shanghai, the dramatic difference in Shanghai, the building that is going on there. You know, they have a stock market in Shanghai. People can actually invest in certain companies. And... Um, uh, uh, President uh, Jiang uh, Zemin has announced that uh, many of the uh, state-owned uh, businesses are going to go to uh, uh, a consortium of uh, private interests. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Um, you ask where I went. Well, uh, I was in Xi'an. Uh, I was in uh, Chongqing. I was in uh, uh, Wushan. I was in uh, Beijing, of course. Uh, and uh, Shanghai and uh, some little towns that I couldn't even tell you the names uh, but um, here you see a people that have been uh, they, they still uh, let me tell you something they still talk about the cultural revolution and privately they will tell you that Mao Zedong was, was a nut job and he was what they're doing now is uh, revering uh, Dong Xiaoping and downgrading uh, 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 Mao Zedong. As a matter of fact, one Chinese individual had made a statement uh, in Beijing that uh, they should burn the corpse of uh, Mao Zedong uh, because uh, having it on display gives uh, credence to the cult of personality and Mao did uh, China more harm than good. Uh, that man has been arrested. So uh, they don't... <laughs> yeah, I don't want my, my comments to be misinterpreted to have people think, ah, it's... Uh, it's just an oriental version of the United States. No, they have a long way to go, and I really don't think they'll go all that far because um, the Chinese uh, don't uh, seem to... Uh, uh, don't seem... Well, let's put it this way. They don't have the same reference to democracy as we do. I hope I didn't confuse you with that. Catherine, thank you so much for the call. Uh, Vinny from Mineola, what's on your mind, Vinny? Hi, Bob. Um, I wanted to get your opinion on why you think Clinton is so popular for. Is it because the media isn't attacking him like a conservative, or is it truly his personality and the way he handles the issues? I think it's a combination. Okay. I, th I, th I think, it's a, first of all, he's got the media in his back pocket. Uh, they soft-pedal everything. Uh, maybe, unfortunately, there aren't uh, more than the Fox Network and uh, the New York Post. Um, that's number one. And number two, what you said, I think you, you, you put it in a nutshell. He's, he's a skillful uh, performer. Uh, even though the David Broders and the Bob Grants and a lot of other people can see through him, the average Cavon out there obviously cannot see through this guy. So between his own uh, skill and uh, the media, uh, the Tim Russerts, the people like that who uh, are very clever in uh, the way they protect this president, uh, that combination keeps his popularity up there. Any other question? And no. there's one other, there's one other okay. thing, and that is that the economy is, is so good. I mean, the stock market, even on a bad day, you know it's going to go up the next day. Somebody said to me in Hong Kong, a businessman, he says, uh, you know, the stock market in your country has never been like this, never been like it anywhere, where it just keeps going up, up, and up, 
it has a little down day and then it goes up again. And um, that's because uh, people have a lot of money. They don't know where to put it. They want to make more. Americans are never satisfied. I had a young Chinese uh, 20, 21-year-old fellow. Uh, he said, greedy people can never be happy. And you want to know something? He's right. How can you be greedy and happy at the same time? Will someone please explain that to me? Thank you very much, uh, Vinny. Bob Grant here. And uh, the sermon will continue after these words. Bob Grant on WOR. Attribute that to Bill Clinton. I don't either. Oh, but but in the a to the average person, they say, yeah, things are good. He, 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 may, he must be all right. I, I'm, I'm trying to put my... I'm trying to figure how the average person can give him such a, uh, a pass. You know, the banks are giving such low interest rates. Where else are people going to put their money? Well, uh, again, uh, I'm just citing conditions, uh, but, uh, you know, the, uh, the ironic point of all this is during the 1992 presidential campaign, George Bush had said that the economy uh, was on the verge of a, uh, recovery. Of a big recovery. Absolutely. And, uh, every, uh, and naturally, the New York Times, the Washington Post... Uh, uh, ridiculed that, and Bill Clinton ridiculed that. But uh, later on, Mr. Greenspan pointed out that George Bush was right. But at the time he said it, nobody was paying attention to him. He seemed like a tired man, and indeed he was. And uh, we know uh, that uh, tired people uh, lose. Benefited by everything George Bush said. And Bob, one more thing. Can I say one more thing? Yes, ma'am. I find it so interesting. I was reading today's paper, Sun Sentinel here, and you know uh, how they cover for this Clinton. Suddenly, they're going into Paula Jones's IRS files. How? That's a coincidence, Isn't of course. That interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think uh, at least the people who listen to the Bob Grant show are smart enough, sophisticated enough <laughs> to see through it. Unfortunately. As big uh, an audience as we do have, it doesn't represent the majority of the American public, unfortunately. Thank you very much, Gene. Here's uh, John from Waukegan, Illinois, one of my favorite all-time towns. Yes, John. Hi, Bob. I've been listening to your show for some time, and I've noticed that the only time Bill Clinton gets a day off is when you're on vacation. Your show is surely and slowly drifting to one topic, you know, on a regular basis. By the way, let me... Uh, let me uh, remind you, uh, John, that it was not I who even uh, brought Bill Clinton up. Uh, if you are as attentive as you say you are, you would have heard uh, my opening remarks, and people apparently weren't interested in talking about China. Who brought up Bill Clinton? Did I? They will flock around a Clinton basher. Uh, well, listen, I, I wear that... Uh, I wear that uh, badge proudly. You want to call me a Clinton basher? I, I wear that proudly. You have just complimented me, uh, John. I would rather be a Clinton basher uh, than uh, whatever you are, protecting this guy at all costs. Thank you, John. Thank you, and adios. Bill from Babylon. What's on your mind, Bill? Uh, hello, Bob. Uh, while you were in China, uh, there was a Charlie uh, Rose, uh, you know, interviewed uh, Michael Douglas, the son of uh, Kurt Douglas. And there was a part in the interview where the President Clinton came up and, and he was, uh, Mike Douglas was saying what a terrific job he's doing as President. Uh, and I, I'm just amazed that these high uh, Hollywood type, high, high profile people, uh, what planet are they on? Well, why should you be amazed? Uh, Hollywood has been smitten uh, with the Clintons uh, from the very beginning. I mean, why, why should you be surprised? Well, uh, I'm just trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, and uh, I can't see how anyone in their sane mind, without laughing, uh, could bestow uh, accolades on the uh, current president. Well, uh, you've got to understand that there are people like that. As a matter of fact, apparently there are more people like that than like you and me. Uh, look at the uh, individual who was on, John from Waukegan, who was on just ahead of you. He's called his program twice, just twice. And uh, both times it was uh, to uh, attack me for being, quote, a Clinton basher. And uh, 
It just so happens that he's a fake, phony fraud because I know Mr. Severin has as much contempt for Bill Clinton as I do and uh, does not hide uh, his uh, displeasure and his opprobrium for the president. And uh, this guy tries to make it sound like only I bring out the Clinton bashers. You understand? Yes, sir. Uh, but look, uh, why dwell on the fact that Michael Douglas likes Bill Clinton? So what? So what? Thank you. <laughs> okay, here's John from Pompano Beach, Florida. Hello, John. Are you there, John? About uh, people like Russert and all giving Clinton a pass. Made me think of a speech I saw Paul Duke give on C-SPAN the other day. You, you know Paul Duke. He's yes, like, he's another one of the uh, <laughs> yeah. cookie-cutter liberals, yeah. yes. Well, it, it, I mean, I want to see your reaction to this because my reaction was, geez, you know, he says, uh, he was talking about all the presidents lying. He says that Jimmy Carter lied when he said he'd never lie to us. Ronald Reagan lied when he said he was going to balance the budget uh, within four years, and he never did. George Bush lied when he said, read my lips. And then he says, even Bill Clinton lied when he said, um, when he said that uh, he was going to give us a tax cut, and it took him five years to do it. Do you read in the, the underlying, uh, you know, uh, what he's trying to put across on that? Bill Clinton didn't, he didn't take him five years. He gave us the biggest tax cut in history once he got in. Mark Anthony couldn't have done that better. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Yep. I, I just thought I'd, you know, that's just a typical what you see every day. Right you are. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> straight ahead. The woman who called, uh, quoting Michael Douglas, seemed to be upset because Michael Douglas uh, is a fan of uh, his slickness, uh, but why shouldn't Michael Douglas, outside of Charlton Heston and maybe Tom Selleck, I guess uh, everybody in Hollywood, uh, uh, a Clinton lover, uh, because uh, they're liberal Democrats out there. I mean, that's what they are. Uh, but uh, for the edification of that gentleman and anybody else, let me quote um, a story uh, thusly. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, indebted to Carl of Oyster Bay, the intrepid, uh, uh, shall we say, the intrepid uh, pathologist uh, who uh, is um, dissecting the Clinton administration. Bob, he writes, welcome back. This little tidbit was hardly noticed even on talk radio. And uh, the quote is, funky... President Clinton may have gotten a little too far down last week at Martha's Vineyard. White House image tenders are praying that photos of Clinton wearing a vintage Afro wig won't see the light of day. On Friday, Clinton made an appearance at a party at the Hot Tin Roof, a vineyard uh, nightclub co-owned by Carly Simon. Kicking the jams out of the affair were... The Boogies, a band fronted by Carly's fetching daughter, Sally Taylor, with band members done up in full 70s regalia. Anyway, the Boogies had just played Sister Sledge's We Are Family when Carly and son Ben Taylor came on stage with the president. Uh, Clinton joked that the band's outfits were part of the White House's new dress code, which may have been why one of the Boogies thought it proper to tug on to the president's head a floppy wig that would have done Sly Stone proud. Just thought I'd uh, share that with you for whatever it's worth, and it's not really worth much, but, uh, hey, uh, people love gossip. And yes, uh, the uh, tragic death of uh, Princess Diana did make news even in China. Yeah, good afternoon, Bob. Uh, I'm over at my brother's house now, and I had the radio on in the living room, and I'm reading something. And my brother is out in uh, his garage, and he's working on it. And he also has a radio out there, and he's listening to it. And he came back in to grab a beer out of the refrigerator. He goes, oh, that Bob Grant, he just came back from China. I said, yes. He goes, oh, uh, why did he give uh, his hard-earned uh hard currency to those uh, communists over there in uh, China. I said, well, I don't know. I'll give him a call and see what he says. He goes, oh, you won't call him over there. So, my brother right now is in his garage. He's out there working, and he just says, you know, why did you go over there and give your hard-earned money to the commies over there? What's the matter with your brother that he can't uh, 
ask the question himself. Uh, because he's out there working. He's, he's out there working. He's got one working. day off. This sounds like a very fake call. No, I, Bob. It I mean, so strange. He's out in the garage working. He came in to get a beer. Yeah. And he said, gee, he's in China. Why is he spending his hard-earned money, giving his hard-earned money to those commies? He's out uh, Bob. What an absurd, what an absurd phone call. It might, it might be absurd, but it's the truth. He's out there right now. Well, I'm Listen, glad he's out there. I'm glad he's out there, but I'm not going to play straight man for you and your uh, imagined brother. Uh, if the closest you've come to having a brother is uh, you do have two heads. Now, get off my phone, you fake phony fraud. Uh, you know, I tell you, there's one thing I just don't tolerate is these uh, pretenders. If a guy wanted to ask me a question or put me down, that's one thing. That's fine. But why pretend that you got a brother in the garage who came in for a beer, now he's back out of the garage working, and while he was here, he asked the question. First of all, I didn't give any money to the commies. I didn't give... The, <laughs> the only money I gave was to a magnificent guide by the name of Rose. Her name, her last name is Yao. Rose Yao. And what... The greatest guide, tour guide, one could ever have. And I talked to Joan Hamburg. I didn't talk to John, but I'm sure he'd agree. Uh, Joan Hamburg, when she was there a couple of weeks ago, she met Rose, and she agrees that uh, these are the greatest guides, these, uh, these Chinese guides. Uh, anyway, uh, let's say hello to, uh, is it Dan Mealy on the line? No, Dan Mealy wouldn't call. It's Joe from Brooklyn. Hello, Joe. Hi, Bob. I think that woman I called earlier... Uh, saying that Hello, Congress wants there. to find. Hello? Joe, are you there? What happened to Joe? Joe? <laughs> are you there? Yes, sir. What happened to you? I'm here. Let's go. I think that woman that phoned earlier saying that Congress wants to find doctors if you go to them with freedom of choice was a little bit incorrect. They want to find the doctors if the doctors do not submit to Medicare. Even if the doctor doesn't want to be paid by Medicare, he has to submit to Medicare so you can get paid by your secondary insurance. And some doctors will say, well, I have a procedure that Medicare might not like, so I don't want to submit it to Medicare. And this way we cannot submit to our secondary insurance. Are you a doctor? Pardon me? Are you a doctor? No, but I think that one was... What, right kind, of, what kind of weird phone are you using? What is going on here? Bob, it's an AT&T phone. Uh, an AT&T phone? Hmm, they should be working better than that. Uh, at any rate, um, where was the lady wrong? She's saying that Congress wants to prohibit you from freedom of choice. Well, in effect, wouldn't that, uh, wouldn't that be the case? No. They no? Want, they, want to, they want to uh, find... Isn't there a provision of that bill that uh, if you do uh, go to a doctor not approved, um, and this is an HMO, uh, well, it's inspired by HMO, if you do go to a doctor not approved... Uh, you uh, you have to pay, isn't that true? Yes, but then you want to. Well, get then the lady wasn't entirely wrong. You want to get reimbursed from your secondary insurer, and they won't reimburse you until exactly. Medicare so the lady wasn't wrong, uh, Joe. She wasn't wrong. Bob, the Wall Street Journal had an editorial on this a few days ago. Read it, and I'll call you back. No, I won't read it, and you won't call me back uh, because uh, I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to be patronized by Bob Wall Street Journal. You're on the phone talking for yourself, aren't you? Okay, and because I'm saying that the lady wasn't entirely wrong, you don't like that? All right, I'm going to make you happy. I'm going to make you a day. The lady was all wrong. There, now he's happy. He also hung up on me, too. Can you imagine hanging up on someone? I can't imagine that. I mean, that is the height of rudeness. Shouting at someone, hanging up on them. I mean, that, that is not what the telephone was intended for. What was it intended for? Oh, I know. Calling your next door neighbor and gossiping all morning about something totally unimportant. And I watched the Chinese Congress, and it was like I was watching a Democratic platform. I was in awe. Oh, I couldn't believe it. And the second thing I wanted to mention is that I saw the, I think it's the editor of the Washington Times. Uh, no, no, no. The New York Times, but the Washington Bureau. And very nobly, he said he's going to cover the Senate hearings this week. However, this week is when the Democrats have free reign to drag the Republicans over the coals. And I was so annoyed that he was so proud he's going to cover the meeting this week. But before that, they weren't too conscientious. So those were my two things that I was so in awe of. 
All right, Gloria. I thank you. Thank you very much. Here's uh, Andy from uh, Central New York checking in on the Bob Grant Show. 1-800-321-8828. Yeah, hello, Andy. Welcome back, Mr. Grant. I've been a fan of yours for a good number of years. Well, thank you, sir. I, uh, I was sitting here beautifying my property when I heard somebody make a comment about Korea. Uh, United States being a paper tiger. Yes. And at the risk of sounding to be like a warmonger, uh, I've got 20 years of military time in, and uh, if we were a paper tiger and they checked that bounty body count when they came across the border there, uh, I don't see that as being much of a paper tiger. And when we ended a war in five days in Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, there, there there is a lot of misinformation out there about the United States Armed Forces, but when the bottom line, we, we, we're we a dedicated group that goes and does the job when we're called on, and it's and I'm reminded of some of those other gentlemen that work in the White House, particularly the FBI agent, uh, when, when uh, those people dedicate their lives to protect the servants, I guess, that we elect. It, well, it kind of gets to a point where you know, well, yuck, yuck, yuck. I read it in the newspaper one, you know. Well, I'm, I'm referring to Mr. Aldrich's book there. That, that, that gets to, that kind of hurts a little bit when some of us, when some of us have dedicated our lives to... I don't know why you take this personally. Uh, after all, you don't make policy. I don't care how dedicated you are, hmm. uh, whether you're a, uh, uh, a dope boy or a general officer. I don't care uh, if you're wearing the uniform or not. The fact of the matter is, you've got to take orders. So, uh, yes, we were a paper tiger. That doesn't mean that uh, the uh, fighting uh, personnel over there weren't good. They were good. They were the best. But uh, their general was fired, and the policy was changed. Don't you remember that? I don't understand. This this guy is is taking it personally because we were referred to as a paper tiger, but we can only do what uh, the commander-in-chief uh, tells us to do. And uh, the commander-in-chief said, don't go to the Yellow River. Well, if uh, Mr. Clinton was a Republican, how would you feel about him? I'd be very disappointed in him. I doubt if you ever would talk that way about a Republican. No, I'd be very disappointed. I, I would be very disappointed. I would be very disappointed in him. I would be very disappointed in him. Uh, I mean, I, I've answered your question. Why do you want to keep going on? And what did you learn to talk like that? Did someone drop you in uh, cement and the cement wasn't quite dry yet? And you didn't get out fast enough? I mean, where are you? A thousand times worse. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> You're a thousand times What have you been gargling with? Pray tell, lie? I mean, how do you get to talk that way? I want to find out. Are you there? You're, you're a slime bag yourself. That's what you are. What am I? <laughs> she hung up. I don't know what, what she called me, but whatever it was, it probably was very apropos. Oh, slime bag. <laughs> I'm a slime bag. <laughs> oh, dear. A slime bag. Okay. <laughs> the container of choice is a bag. <laughs> oh, you know, it. Uh, I'll be the first to admit it. Most of the people who call the Bob Grant Show are anti-Clinton. Uh, for some reason, they are attracted to this program. But the uh, few uh, pro-Clinton people who call this program are like uh, this particular individual <laughs> who was just on the line right now, trying to effect a cultured way of speaking. But that's what happens uh, when uh, uh, you are ashamed of your background. Anyway... I'm a slime bag, am I? Take that. Emmy from Watertown. What's on your mind, Emmy? Yes, hi, Bob. Glad you're back from China. Hey. And yes, I am definitely anti-Clinton. <laughs> I would like to speak to you about the um, Medicare. I also heard that woman. I agree with her. Now, what I would like to say about this is these people that are doing this apparently either think they're not going to live to be 65 or they can't see the end of, beyond the end of their nose, or both. 
And if people stop to realize what the HMOs are do doing to us, what the insurance companies are doing to us, and what the government's doing to us, nobody is going to need Jack of Orkin. They're going to do it for us. Well, uh, this is something that um, has been going on behind the scenes very quietly. Oh, I know. And uh, the, uh, the goal, the goal really is, the goal really is, uh, the National Review is absolutely correct. George Will is correct. I mean, there have been many uh, excellent uh, commentators who have analyzed this, and uh, they say that uh, what Madame Hillary is uh, doing here behind the scenes is what she tried to do in the very beginning. That's right. And that is give us a socialized medical program. That's right. They don't bother to check, and as I say, they either don't think they're going to live to be a ripe old age, or they can't see any further than the end of their nose. Well, uh, too bad we don't have uh, courageous Republicans to protect us. You're absolutely right. I mean, can you imagine the sorry state of affairs we have? The Democrats who are out to destroy...